good? All right, hold on. Let me get my face. <laughs> <laughs> this episode of the evolution of Noah O is brought to you by Squex. You will drink. No on this episode of the evolution of Noah O, we meet up with visual artist Noah Scalin and also emerging rock star of the League of Space Pirates as he takes us aboard his spaceship, the Detritus. And we also travel to the south side of Richmond with hip hop artist Dale Jones as he shows us around his south side Richmond community and also the hillside court projects which he grew up in. All right, we're on the way. He said we're good. We're good? <laughs> All right, y'all. <laughs> yeah, just go right on up. <laughs> nah, man, that's so crazy. This boy, this big boy is crazy. That's that's the um, auxiliary airlocks. That's where I escape. Yeah, we let him go out that way because he's too heavy. To I'm go too out heavy. I'm Thirty-six thousand pounds. <laughs> he drinks a lot of sweats. This is what you there. don't see. Look, it says. It's extra dark cola. That's because it's dark matter. Don't drink this stuff. It's terrible. It's great. It literally, the warning on the back is longer than the ingredients. Look how long that warning what is. What is the warning? It's delicious. That it'll cause pretty much every problem you can imagine. Your, if your eyesight's better than mine, you can tell me what it says. Squicks, you will drink. This product contains delicious real dark matter, the consumption of which has not been tested thoroughly on humans. It may cause uncontrollable weight gain or loss, hearing loss or improvement, decreased or increased visibility, irritability, bleeding from eyes, loose stool, rude hand gestures, loss of sense of humor, and death of eternal life. Squirk is for entertainment purposes only, and Uber Court holds no responsibility for the results of this consumption. Opening the top of this bottle constitutes a legal agreement between you and Uber Court. Enjoy! I mean, seriously. It has a legal binding contract on the bottle. Why would you do that? Don't do that. It's a terrible thing. Squex doesn't, um, it doesn't make you fatter. It makes you denser. It makes you weigh more. In space. Just in general, ma increased in mass. Okay. So, so you just, yeah. So it just, you get heavier and heavier and heavier. So you I have know, to go out the escape pod to get so to our heavy that we can't that actually just bring him the normal way. <laughs> off I the drink ship. so much Squex. Noah is from Richmond. That's like, I, that, you know, like I told you, man, when I first met you, and when D made me aware, like, of everything you had done, I was just like, man, I can't believe it, but like, you live around the corner, you know what I mean? Like, I felt the same way about you. Yeah, you work for Troll, yeah. right? It's the, the craziest yeah. movie company, yeah. Yeah. independent. Oh, yeah, I mean, Troll and Julia. For real? Yeah. Oh, you're in the movie? Yeah, you can see me. Let me see. Soon. So this is him. This yeah, is you looking actually, like a Backstreet Boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually made by um, Brigham's wife. She what? made that for me. Yeah. So she makes toys. Well, she oh, she yeah. makes all kinds of art, but she was doing a thing where she was making some custom action figures of, the, of her husband and her friend, and I was like, I want one of those. So we traded art for it. Who are these called? Devo. Devo. Yeah. Crack that whip. <laughs> 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 Since you know about Squex, I can show you something very rare. Very rare. Very rare. Very rare. This is rarer this is, than all the so rare. Squ uh, Uber Corp started out as a um, company that produced oh, that's crazy. Um, patent medicine, you know, so like stuff that was questionable in the 1800s. And actually, look, you can see where they started. It was in Richmond, Virginia. So Uber Corp started here in the 1800s. In the 1800s, but people don't really know about them now. That's crazy. That's their first part. And see, it was called Squex. There's just not enough people that want a oil snake, though. Yeah. <laughs> snake. <laughs> That's what's amazing to me. Like, you created a whole world and a universe. It's not... I mean, it just blows my mind. I can't even think about it. Like, you created a whole alternate universe. Products in the universe. Like, it's just genius. It's genius. Because you not only have a band, but there's like... The band is, is really just an outcropping of the universe. Like, that's not the primary... Thing, right? it's just one of, of we have input to it too. Why? <laughs> yeah, you guys are allowed to say a little bit about it. That's something in that stuff. I was working as a commercial artist for many years, and I've always been an artist, but uh, I got stuck. I was basically like not enjoying my career anymore, and I was really frustrated because it was what I wanted to be doing. And I just had this moment where I was like, I need to do something else. And I decided randomly, really randomly, to make a skull every day for a year. 
And so that's what this is now a record of, is, is that project where basically every day I just tried a different technique, did something new, just experimented. And I didn't really mean it to be something more than just me figuring out what was Bro, this right is for me, like what I needed to get yeah. you know, inspired again. And it really struck a chord with people. Like people were just, you know, went crazy for it. It got a lot of press and people were sending me skulls and writing about it and it just blew up and I, I completely was surprised by that because I was really just, I mean, I started off like spending 20 minutes a day on it and by the end it was like you know, two, four hours a day, sometimes 10 <laughs> yeah. hours, 12 hours a day just like, making Like did it get progressively harder as the time went on? Like, man, I it, can't it, just It sort of did another, in the sense that, yeah. Boom, you know, yeah. I got to yeah. one-up myself. I mean, in mean? the sense that I wanted to do better, it yeah. did get harder, but in the sense that like I was having more fun and had more time to put into more excitement about it, like it, it, that was sort of the trade-off of it is that like I wanted to put more effort into it. So something like like the flowers you saw, like those were huge. Like this is not a street outside. I mean, this is a massive bouquet of flowers that we got from a florist, you know, just to do that day, just for that one day. You know, every day it would be like, what else can we do? Uh, and it was you know getting all my friends involved. Um, did a lot of stuff with that scooter shop and was just like, you know, people that offered me opportunities. For the video store, yeah. they were like, come. In. You know, I came in and asked them if I could do this, and they were like, sure. I wouldn't have asked them. Did you feel like your mind was getting consumed by skulls? Like yeah, I mean, saying, I'll tell you, once you get involved in something like this, you're going to see skulls yeah, all the time. Everywhere. Everywhere. But I mean, it's also offered me an opportunity to basically transform my life and my career. Because yeah. now I spend my time making art and I travel the world and I talk to people in corporations now about creativity because Dang. I made skulls, which is like... So this really set off oh, yeah. everything. Oh, yeah. No, everything. I mean, I'd had a career before as an artist and designer, but it wasn't like... You know, it was a certain level, and this just took it to an entirely different level. Yeah. And okay, who wanna play? Oh, so, as far as like the series, the Anatomy of War, like, what's the meaning of like? I know you said you did like three D printed guns, and and then you put the organs in them. But yeah. what's the purpose of that? Like, I, I most of the art I've been making recently is about my sort of trying to come to grips with the current state of violence in the world and America specifically. And I've been trying to work out the issues because I think it's so complicated. And I feel like right now what's happening in this country is it's all like everybody's on one side or the other side. Yeah, everybody's talking totally to right. each other. And it's just become this really thing where like everybody's just spouting whatever. And I really wanted to make something that could talk about the people behind the weapons. Mm -hmm. And so especially in terms of war and specifically that's why the AK, because that's the most commonly used weapon in war around the world, that let's talk about the human on both sides the yeah. people being shot but also people holding them and like can we have a dialogue about that rather than focusing on the gun and the gun is such i mean you can see like it's a sexy thing right people love to hold AK. it looks cool and it's on the cover of everything and jewelry yeah. i don't want it to be cool i want it to be something that's not cool and i feel like the thing about when i made these was people were like that's gross and i was like good yeah, i yeah, want yeah, you to yeah, feel like it's yeah, gross because yeah. i don't want it to be about i want it to be about something else and so that work specifically was trying to talk to people about can we talk in a different way about this and can we connect because the thing is i've got friends who are gun owners i've got yeah. friends who hate hey, guns right yeah who hate them too and I, it's i don't want it to be about that yeah. I, I, that's irrelevant to me it's more like what are we doing to have less people die because yeah. i feel like everybody wants that i hope everybody wants that you know i mean in the end i feel like that's the part that we should be spending our energy on instead of being like oh we should make a law to do this yeah. or we should do that or we should you know ban this or we should you know, conceal care, whatever it is, that's not helping. No, nah, like you said, you're we're at a time where nobody a lot is being said but nobody's talking. Nobody's communicating. Nobody's listening. So yeah. you're through the art you're creating and sparking and stimulating a conversation. At the very least. Yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. I didn't understand it at first, but you're absolutely right. Like, yeah, I was fascinated with guns as a kid. And then as you get older you go, man, look at it's just part of, a, as Americans, it's like part of our culture. Yeah. And I have a, my aunt is married to a guy from uh, the UK, and he, he, must I mean, be he tells me every time culture. I see him, yeah, he's like, man, you guys are insane. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, I don't understand this And we think it's normal, and we're like, this is just the way it has to be. Yeah. And you go somewhere else, I mean, I've been in Japan where, like, nobody has guns, and it's really safe feeling. Yeah. And it's like, an urban, you know, Tokyo, that's a, that's a big, big, big city. city, and it does not feel like it does to go to a big city here, where you're like, I feel like I'm in danger, yeah. you know? I mean, but we created that, and then we claim that it, this is the only way it could ever be, you know? Uh, yes. So I've got something for you. What's that? Uh, just to thank you for working with the League of Space Pirates, I'm making you an honorary 
Space Pirate. Does it work? It does. There you go. How cool is that? <laughs> there you go. Use it safely. 